Hey, this is James. It's good to see you today. Hello, it's good to see y'all today. Uh, we were planning on doing a series for the Believe class entitled, Will the Je Real Jesus Stand Up? Uh, but in light of recent days and some things that's been going on, uh, we've been led to talk about living with hope in a broken world. Uh, you and I have been so focused on, on the coronavirus plague for so long that many have begun to wonder if there will ever be hope for something else to take place. Take, take, take our minds off the plague. I, I don't know about you, but man, I've been, I mean, man, I want to hear something else on the news. Uh, and, and now we've got, we, we've had rotting in the streets, even though that's starting to die down. Uh, there's still pockets of some of that. Uh, one began as a protest uh, for the, uh, of the death of, of George Floyd, uh, in, in many, uh, cities and, and it quickly turned into anarchy in the streets. And, uh, uh and, and so once again, people are wondering, is there any hope for today? You might be there. Well, Peter wrote in 1 Peter uh, about some of these same issues that we're dealing with. Nero uh, was the Roman governor, a Roman emperor uh, on the throne. Uh, he became emperor after Claudius, which was his adopted father, had died. Uh, and, and, and one of the things that Nero's known for is his cruelty. He was, he was very cruel. He murdered his own mama. And then his first wife and, and probably his second wife, he killed them. Uh, he increased persecution against followers of Jesus. And he claimed that Christians started the fire that burned down Rome. Uh, in fact, they, they say when Rome burned down in, in AD 64, uh, that, that, that not only did, did he fiddle while Rome burned, but that he, he began the fire so that he can then start building a, a new city center uh, to honor himself. And, uh, and so anyway, his reign was a reign of terror and it was a lot of bloodshed. Uh, that, and that was the climate that which Peter and the early church found themselves in. And so Peter wanted his people and others to know that our basis for our hope is in Jesus Christ and our hope is in Christ is, is sure and is certain. So we're gonna, we're gonna be studying, um, this series, uh, um, for, for the next few weeks, okay? And we have the personal of uh, God uh, books. If you want one, just let us know, or you can pick it up uh, Sunday or at Drive Up Church. But we will have those available. And we're going to have six studies uh, in this series. The first one is uh, the basis for our hope, which we will do today, the expression of our hope, the testimony of our hope, the endurance of our hope, the joy arising from our hope, and the accumulation of our hope. And, and again, we've got personal study guides, and if you want them, when you come to Drive Up Church, say, hey, I need a copy of the Sunday School book that, that Pastor James and Jane is teaching from, and uh, and we'll get them. They're in, uh, it's one of the adult classes here, and uh, um, it's the one that, that Frank normally teaches, and uh, and so uh, you're welcome to that. And so if you have a copy of that already, you can follow along, and this is the first uh, one on that. Uh, all of our study, uh, all these uh, six things that Jenny just mentioned, they're going to come from the book of First Peter. Uh, uh, and, 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 you know, this would be a great time to read through the book of First Peter. And maybe you haven't done that in a while, but read through it and, uh, and maybe take a chapter a week and, and read through it and meditate on it, study it with us. Uh, if you're growing weary, listen, if you're growing weary and discouraged, uh, don't do that. Um, we, we as Christians, we as believers, we do have victory and hope because of what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross. And he did tell us that we was going to have rough times. He did tell us we was going to have bad times and everything. So here's, here's the first question, a thought question, and uh, uh, that, that 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 I want you to think about. Okay, we've all been at that point uh, sometimes about wanting to give up, and we've all at some point or another wanted to throw in the towel. When has there been a time that you were glad that you did not give up? Let me ask that again. When was a time that you were glad that you did not give up, that you kept going, that you persevered through it? So those are times that you get to lean on and grow from and, and, and all that stuff. And so Because, you know, we all love a comeback story. Mm -hmm. and we like it when the underdog comes from behind and gets, you know, wins. Uh, we love that. And we like it, you know, when that person's been knocked down and all of a sudden they rise back up and they win the, the game, the tournament, whatever it may be. And maybe that's your story. Maybe you've been knocked down and you've come back, you know. And so that's what we're going to be talking about. The early Christians here, Nero had basically knocked them down. Mm -hmm. And he had persecuted them. He had blamed them for things they hadn't done. And so they have a comeback story. And, and we do too. 
uh, even with this corona that's going around, the protesting, we have a comeback story. And so we're going to learn how to have hope and how the church can come back. That's right. You know, the early church really is a comeback story church because, I mean, from Paul persecuting and then Nero burning everything and blaming the Christians and then a lot of people were just um, attacking them and, and stuff. It really is a great comeback story and, and, uh, and it has a lot of applications for us today. And so we're going to be in First Peter chapter 1 today and uh, and we're going to be, I think, verses 1 through 9 or something like that and, uh, and, 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 and all. And so um, as you've grown accustomed to on, on our late uh, past video series, um, uh, Jenny's going to read scripture and I'm going to teach from it and, uh, and, and I'll, but uh, we're going to be in 1 Peter chapter 1 and the first verses we're going to read are verses 1 through 3 Peter an apostle of Jesus Christ to God's elect strangers in the world scattered throughout Pontus Galatia Cappadocia Asia Bithynia and who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and sprinkling by his blood. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, has, he has given us his new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Very good. I'm glad you had to read that and had to pronounce all the names, not me. And all. Uh, pretty much. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Okay. Uh, pretty much what, what Peter's doing in First Peter, he's identifying himself and, and to those whom he's writing. Notice he says, I'm an apostle of Jesus Christ. Now, now, when, when they were writing, um, uh, the, the day we don't have living apostles, okay, because the apostles of the day, when they was using, it was those who had, had walked with Jesus. They saw him. They not only saw him before, but they saw him after he had risen from the dead. And we don't have anybody to Today that uh, Walton talked to Jesus and saw him rise from the dead, you know, because they would be 2,000 years old or more. Um, but we do have the gift of apostleship today, uh, and the gift of apostleship is um, is somebody who begins new work of pioneer ministries and, and so forth on that line. And so, but Peter is identifying himself that he's an apostle of Jesus Christ, that he saw the risen Lord personally. And then he says, I'm writing to the to the pilgrims of the dispersion, or the, uh, the Greek word here is the sporia. Um, some translations you scattered, what did George have? Um, there he was. They, they who were who were they? he was running to the who have been chosen. No, uh, back have been scattered. You got the word scattered, okay? And it's uh, so scattered, you know. And, and the word di diaspora or, or the word scattered he used here uh, means they were exiled from the land. In other words, they were not welcome there, and they and it was so bad for them that they knew to live they was going to have to get out of there. But they was also being told you going you can't stay around here. We don't want you here. And so uh, so they were really being exiled from the land. And then in verse two, uh, he is letting them know. Uh, how he's praying for him. He's, and, and he says, listen, all you people who's been scattered, uh, you who are strangers and foreigners in another land, I'm praying for you. And in verse 3, he's actually encouraging uh, his readers um, uh, to praise God. He said, you've been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God, and uh, you've been sanctified by the Spirit of God. Uh, you, 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 you are to be obedient and because you've been sprinkled with the blood of Jesus Christ. And, all. and so, Jenny, read, um, uh, read verse 3 for us again. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Notice where he says our hope comes from. It comes from, from the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The greatest comeback story of all, right? And, and uh, uh, this is something that the study guide has written in. And, I, and I've just got it written down. I'm, I'm going to just read it to you, Cain. Okay? This lively hope has been secured for us this lively hope has been secured for us by Christ's finished work on the cross. It's not based on a positive mindset, not based on wishful thinking or our striving to make things better or make things work out. Living hope is ours because we've been chosen by God, we've been saved by the death and the resurrection of His Son, and we are set apart by His Holy Spirit. And that's a that's a great great uh, statement for us and all. And, and if you were wondering about the, can you have hope? Yes, you know the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ gives you the greatest hope. And uh, it's not just wishing your way out of something bad, but it's uh, applying that the the relationship that you have in Christ. And so um, uh, the second question, the first question was, um, when was the time that you was glad you did not give up? The question number two, want to ask you is. What do you find most encouraging in these verses? That what we've been reading, what do you find the most encouraging? 
Uh, you know, every one of us, if Jenny answered, I would answer it, you would answer it. Uh, we would all have a have a different thing that we find the most encouraging. But let me tell you, one of the great things is that we God has has begotten. He has born us again to a living hope. We don't have to wander hopelessly and and wonder if things are going to work out because um, we have a living hope, and that, that's a great thing. A living hope, not a wishful or hopes it's going to happen, but a living hope, and it's found. In Jesus Christ, okay? So, Jenny, how about take care of us uh, reading verses 4 and 5? Okay. And, uh, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming uh, of the salvation that is already to be revealed in the last time. And so in verse 4, Peter's picking up what he's already said up in verse 3 about having a lively hope, which is our salvation. And here in verse 4, he says it's an inheritance. Notice the three ways he describes the inheritance. He said it's it's incorruptible, it's undefiled, and it does not fade away. And and so he's saying some very specific things here. He says it is incorruptible. That was a military term that that was describing a territory that was so secure that that there was no outside invading force that could ever penetrate and come in and destroy it. So he says you have a living hope. It's an inheritance. Is incorruptible. Uh, it can't be. It can't be destroyed. But it, not only that is it, it is undefiled. Uh, uh, it, it is pure and it's sustained. It, it is unstained by the world. So it is a pure hope. It's unstained by the world. And in this old gospel song, the world didn't give it to me. The world can't take it away. That that really is what he's saying here. You know, and, and that that is not something from the world stained by sin, but it's something that's come from God because it is pure and unstained. But then he said it does not fade away. In other words, it will never lose its power. There's old there's an old gospel song, old gospel hymn that says uh, the blood of Jesus will never loses power and that's certainly what he's saying here that the that the born again that the experience of, of being in a relationship with jesus will never lose his power or its glory and, and, and jenny read that verse four for us again and into an inheritance that can never perish spoil or fade kept in heaven for you and so uh, peter just simply saying we are the we're what that we're kept by god uh, and that's what he states again in verse five go ahead and verse five again who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Uh, back in verse 4, incorruptible was a military term that was describing a territory that was so secure that no invading force could ever invade it and destroy it. And, and he uses the word kept here, that you're kept by the power of God. And again, he's using another military term. I wonder why he was using all these military terms, because Nero had set the military against the people. And uh, to, 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 to weed out and, and root out and, 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 and push down and, and, and persecute, especially the church. And so he's using this word kept here, which is a military term of soldiers that's guarding the city. And what Peter was saying is that, guard is that God is guarding you as a believer through your faith in him. See, we can have hope in salvation. And we can be certain that our inheritance is true uh, because we have something to look forward to at the last time when the trumpet calls and we stand before the throne of Jesus. Uh, we have something to, to return to, but, but he was all, but Peter's also writing about that revealed in the last time that when Jesus Christ was going to return to the earth. Excuse me a second. <clears throat> and so he was talking about that. And so, uh, and one of the points that we need to be reminded of, that good theology, good theology is the understanding of the Bible, the study of God. Uh, it has to be rooted in the truth of God's word, not to the whims of culture, because we can get caught up in every kind of thing that comes along. Uh, we, we might get, a, get our own feelings up, in this, and you know how it is with feelings. They come and go. Um, uh, you, 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 you know what I'm saying? And, 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 but then uh, there are negative people that just pull you down. And so you've got to base everything upon the truth of God's word. Listen, do not, let me repeat it again, do not forget who God is. Do not forget what he has done for you. And do not forget that he is still planning to do something on your behalf, not only in the here, but in the hereafter. And, and that gives us our security. The reason Peter's using this word, kept here. And so, listen, uh, people and circumstances 
cannot and must not rule your mind, okay? As a believer, as a follower of Jesus Christ, that right is reserved only for the Lord Jesus Christ and His Word. He must rule our mind, not our, not the people closest to us, not our circumstances. That must not rule our mind and, and where we're going to get our hope. It must come through Jesus Christ. And when, when everything seems to be breaking apart all around us, our hope must still remain in Jesus Christ and uh, because He is the uncheckable rock, okay? And so, um, let me ask you a third question now, okay? So we're going to move to another section, okay? And so, how does Peter's description of our hope give you hope in the present situation? How does Peter's description of our hope give you hope in the present situation? Remember, he says it's incorruptible, it's undefiled, it does not fade away, it's kept in heaven for us, uh, we are kept. And uh, we're guarded by God. So how does that give you hope in the in the present situation that we're in? Okay. So uh, we're going to be uh, moving on to verses six through nine now. Okay. And so um, Jenny, how about read verse six for us? In in this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. Notice what he says. Uh, for a little while, you, you, you have been grieved by various trials. You've had been through some trials, and you've been grieved because of it. And, and, and uh, what Peter is doing, he's affirming the believers for rejoicing in the future that God has promised for them despite their present trials. Listen, uh, everything can be blowing apart around you, but you can still have hope that God has the future plan. He has it in the palm of his hand. Um, one of the key, notice he says, for a little while, um, how did it say there in in in, in verse six in, in your have you rejoice? Um, is, does it say a little while in now here? For a little while. For a little while, and and the word he's really using is also the word we get the word seasons from. You know, you're going through this only for a season. Now think about seasons. Does summer come and stay forever? Nope. How about winter? Does winter come and stay forever? Fall. Spring? No. Nope. And so, so remember, seasons do change. You might, it, you might seem like, man, the summer's going on forever and ever, or, or the, uh, or, or the winter time's going on forever and forever and ever. But no, it does not, because s seasons will change. And, and though our sufferings on this earth and this life may, may seem to never end, the duration is short when you compare it to the eternal blessings that are waiting us and the length of time and eternity is really a short, just a drop on the timeline and the compared to everything else. And that's why it, it, you and I must keep our eyes focused on Jesus and, and God and what he has done, what he is doing and what he is saying he will continue doing in your life because that gives you something to hope through. Okay, so go back and read verse six and, and add verse seven to it. In this you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials, these have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. And so what he's saying is trials are necessary. Okay, how many of you like trials? Go ahead and raise your hand. Anybody like trials? And I just got my hand up for for demonstration purposes. Okay, uh, no one likes a trial, but but according to to God's word, trials are necessary because they prove the quality of our faith. To whom is it proving it to God? No, because He knows all things. Is it proving to your neighbor? Well, no, it's an example to your neighbor. But the the trial that you're going through that's proving your faith is to prove it to you. It's to show it to you how strong your faith really is. It it shows you whether you, what you are saying is and what what you're doing and what you're saying is it matching up with God's word. See, God already knows the depth of our faith. He and so He allows trials to reveal the depth of our faith to us. Because why? Because sometimes we want to walk around boasting and uh, about different things. So uh, notice there there are several things that He says in here. Uh, to, to us. First of all, trials and temptation, they vary in nature because he said they come in all shapes and sizes. He uses the word manifold. And so they come in all shapes and sizes. So <clears throat> you might have a big one, you might have a little one. Excuse me a second. <clears throat> Sinus is all certain. I started draining, I'm sorry. And, uh, and stuff, but, but they come in, in, in various sizes and, and they vary in nature. Some are, 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 are tough, some are easier to get through than others. 
But he also said they come for a season, that they're temporary. Praise God for that, right? That they're temporary. Um, another thing that he is mentioning to us and teaching us, that trials are difficult. They are difficult. If they were not difficult, everybody would be wanting to go through the trials. Okay, Nobody wants to go through a trial. And so uh, trials are difficult. They drain us, uh, and, and they even stretch us, even to the point that you want to do the proverbial, just throw the towel into the ring. <coughs> I wish they had something to drink here. Yeah. And, uh, and so, uh, and, and it's even getting us to the, you know, to the point of just wanting to give up. And some of you have been there. Uh, there's been times in our lives that we wanted to give up and, uh, and just throw in the towel. But, but he also reminds us here that trials have a purpose. Notice it says it refines us like gold. The only way a gold gets refined is by going through heat, going through the trial of the heat. And then it's purified that way. And, uh, and so we, we get to go through that. And so when it happens, what ought to happen in our life when we go through a trial, and we'll realize we're going through a trial and we're, and we're relying upon the strength and the hope of God, then, then it should rejoice in our rejoicing, not that we are going through the trial, but rejoicing that God is using this to mature us and, and, uh, because we get to know, listen, we get to know more of God by going through this trial than we knew of Him before we went through it, uh, because we get to rely upon Him. Our faith is renewed. Our faith is stretched. Uh, it's difficult, um, but but notice it says that um, that it may be found to praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Not only is it that that revelation of Jesus Christ talking about one day when the trumpet's going to sound and Jesus is going to appear, but the revelation of Jesus Christ that He is true, that He is He is true and honest to His word. Remember, He said He said. Excuse me, he said, I'm going to send you a helper. And the Holy Spirit will walk us through and help us. And the Holy Spirit, while we're going through trials, remind us of, of the suffering of Jesus. But it was also remind us what Jesus taught us about going through trials. And then always pointing us to God the Father who says in Hebrews that, that we need to come before him to find help in our times of trial. Okay, And so uh, let's look at verses 8 and 9. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Very good. And so uh, pretty much he said, listen, he says, your hope in Jesus Christ in the midst of the trials helping you to do a couple of things. One of it is helping you to love Jesus more. Because Jesus Christ suffered more than you and ever, ever will. Uh, none, in fact, the scriptures tells us that none of us have ever shed our blood for our sin. Jesus did that. He shed not for his sin because he didn't have any, but he shed his blood for our sin. And so going through a trial and the hope that we have in Jesus as we go through this trial helps us to love Jesus more and more and more. But it helps us to believe in Jesus for real, okay? Uh, because they, they were able then to own their faith and put it into practice that I'm not relying upon mama's faith and daddy's faith or my neighbor's faith or my pastor's faith or, or my Sunday school teacher's faith or my deacon's faith. I'm relying upon the faith that I have in Jesus Christ. And he is seeing me through this. And, and, and then they had a sense of, of abiding joy. That, and, and that abiding joy is, is, is produced in our life by the Holy Spirit, who which God has deposited within us to guarantee our salvation. But it also produces a, a work within us that, that produces joy. One of the things that, that, that the Holy Spirit does in us is produce the fruits of the Spirit. Remember what they are? Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. This nine of them. For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, meekness, and self-control. And, uh, and so joy is one of those uh, uh, byproducts of the Holy Spirit working in our life, having reign in our life. Joy doesn't depend on the circumstance around you. That's happiness. Joy depends upon your relationship with Jesus Christ and that you have a peace that passes understanding no matter what's going on around it. And so in, in this letter to, to Peter, uh, that Peter wrote here, First Peter, uh, Peter is referring to suffering of godly people. He's going to refer from, from chapter 1 to, to the last chapter in this book. Uh, he's going to refer to, to the suffering of godly people 15 times. Why? Because that's the theme of his book. He's writing to suffering people uh, who are on the verge of giving up hope. And he said, don't do it, okay? And so, uh, and one of the things he's saying is that the righteous can rejoice during difficult times uh, even when all hope seems to be lost because of God's power and our inheritance is secure, and uh, and that really does help us. Okay, 
Okay, so the question is, how do we do this, James? How do we live this out? Because, you know, we are, we are all tempted. That's a good question. Because, you know, we're all tempted to, to be in the depths of the spirit. Oh, woe is me. Or, or just give up and defeat. Just throw in the towel and just walk away and, and, uh, seek to be a, a hermit in the back of a cave until everything ends, right? But, but, but I think we gotta practice the three R's. We have to recognize, we've got to remember and restore. The three R's, okay? Recognize, remember, and restore. Okay, so how do we recognize? Okay, so what we mean by recognize? You, to be truthful, to recognize what you got to do, you've got to be truthful about where you are losing hope. You got to recognize, hey, I'm losing hope. I'm on the point of wanting to give up. Uh, that I'm on the point of wanting to give in, okay, and 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 just throw in the towel. And then you need that when you recognize that, then you need to confess that to God. God, I'm at my wit's end. God, I'm about to give up. God, I don't know what to do. My hope is draining out faster uh, than than the. Pool, the, the water in the bottom of the swimming pool is going down. I, I, it's going down pretty fast, okay? And you need to confess that to God and ask Him, God, I need your strength because, man, I am about ready to throw it in. And I don't want to do that. And so you need to recognize that. Okay. James, you said we need to remember. So how do we get to go about doing that? Well, uh, one way to do that is, is to go back and reread uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. We're not going to see him do all that now, but you need to remember things that we've been talking about. That's one reason it's important for you, not only as you as you watching and listening to sermons and Bible stories and Bible studies, uh, you know, like, like we're doing even now. Uh, sit and take notes, and then go back and, 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 and study back through it so you can remember. God promises Holy Spirit would teach us, but then one of the things that he would do uh, will be uh, not only remind us, but he would teach us and remind us of God's word and how it makes it work, works in our life. And as you're doing that, as you're reading down through here, First Peter chapter one verses one through nine that we've looked at today, and then then make a list. How did Peter encourage others? And as you're making that note, okay, this is how Peter encouraged those who was going through some tough time in his day. How does that apply to me today? Because God's word was not just for back then, it is for us today. And so we need to remember and go back and, and look at it, make a list, and uh, to be remembered what he says. Okay. So we're to recognize and remember. Now you said restore. How do we go about doing that? Restore. Uh, you know, here, here's the thing. God does not want you to waste your trials. Some of you are going through, tr some of you have already been through trials that others have been through before. And so what you need to do is go and restore a brother or a sister who's struggling in that area that you've already uh, went through, that God has equipped you and strengthened you to go through. And so maybe as we were talking about different things today, maybe even right now, God is bringing to so someone to your mind that you know who is on the verge of giving up. You've already been there. You've been past there now. Uh, but do you know somebody on the verge of giving up? Maybe their family's breaking up. Maybe their kid's giving them some problem. Maybe they have financial problems. Maybe they're scared to death about the coronavirus yet. Maybe they're worried about, okay, a rot and looting going on going, going here. Somebody going to break in my house. You know, we can go on and on and on. And uh, But maybe you, you think about some. I want you to think about somebody who, who you know that may be on the verge of losing hope. And uh, and maybe, maybe, again, they are struggling now where you once did. Well, don't waste what you've already done. God has allowed you to go through that to strengthen you. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 4. You've heard me say this before. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 4. He says that God will comfort us and strengthen us during our times of trials so that we can help others who are going through the same thing that we have already experienced. And so don't waste your trial. Use it to help someone else, okay? And so um, so go back and, and do some things. Recognize, hey, this is where I'm struggling. Remember God's word, what he says about it, and then not only apply it, but then uh, and, and let God restore you, but maybe look for somebody else who's struggling and go and help them to be restored back to faith, back to hope, okay? And so that's that's what we got for for this, okay? Okay. And so next week we're going to be talking about our hope is that in Christ changes how we view the world and how we live in it. And so make sure you tune in next week, and we'll learn a little bit more about hope. So now, before you go there, because okay. um, this is going to be posted on on James A. Way. Um, um, Ministries um, YouTube page. Uh, something you can do. Um, you can. We're going to send you a link here on on, on, uh, on robocall call in a little bit. You'll have a you'll have a link to it that you'll be able to go to there. But once you get to the to the to the YouTube page, you can actually subscribe to our YouTube page. 
And then when we post another one, it'll actually notify you that, um, uh, that, that we posted one and then you can just go and watch it. But we'll keep sending out the link too. And, uh, but that way you can do that. But then you also have access. There's other videos on there. There's other sermons on there that we preached and, and Bible studies we've taught and other helps on there. You'll be able to, to, to access that, but you can subscribe there. It doesn't cost you anything to do that. Um, what happens if I get a thousand subscribers? I don't know if I ever get them. I mean, I haven't got about. 30 or 40 now, but anyway, and, and I've been, I've been doing this, uh, YouTube, uh, what? Several years. Yeah, several years, you know, so 35, that's about one a year, I reckon. But anyway, and, uh, and things, but, um, um, if I get a thousand, then I can actually do live YouTube on there, and uh, some of this, we could do live, and then it just actually be recorded on there, and then it actually upload in, and we won't have to record it, and code, and upload it, on, and, and things like that. It actually say what sort of process. But anyway, you can go and subscribe to that. Again, uh, we're going to send you the link anyway, and, uh, but subscribing, just access you to other things, uh, subscribing, I'll just give you a notification when we put another one, so, so next week we'll be back talking about um, how, how Christ changes our view of the world and how to live in it, okay? And so, Jenny, um, why don't you lead us in prayer, and then we will uh, be off of here. Father, we come to you, and we thank you, Father, for providing a sure and certain hope in our lives, Father. And, Father, you know that there's some of us out there that are just ready to give up and throw in the towel, Father. Father, we ask that you will just give us that little something that we need, Father, to, so hope will spring up in our lives, Father. And, Father, that we won't give up, that we'll keep working and keep searching and keep seeking you, Father. And, Father, we ask that you'll help us to live with confidence, Father. Father, that our confidence is in you, Father, that yeah. our hope is in you. Yes. Father, we ask that you just place that confidence yes. within us, Father, and just allow it to grow and mm -hmm. to increase, Father. And, Father, help us to remember that when life gets hard, that you are with us, Father. Yes. Father, that you're there with us going through this struggle, through this trial. Mm -hmm. And Father, that you will just open up doors and you will just provide the opportunities, the resources, the things that we need, mm -hmm. Father, to get through this trial. And Father, we ask that you will just be with our people, Father. Father, that you will bless them, protect them, and watch over us, Father. And Father, just allow our hope to grow. Yes. We ask this in your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. See you next week. Now I have to get close and personal because I got to turn the camera off, okay? Mm -hmm. And so thank you for joining us.